the office never looked so good. There's no admiration crash like that of a fierce rivalry. Oh, yeah. This man knew Shane Warne as an opponent, as a pretty nasty bowler, I would think, from time to time, as a friend and then as a colleague in the broadcast boxes of England. Nasser Hussain, it's great to see you here. It's great to be here. It's an absolute honour. Obviously, it would have been in different circumstances, it would have been better. But to be here, Shane, for me, the greatest cricketer that's ever played the game at his home ground with 50, 60,000 people in. It's going to be an awesome evening, it really is. It's a lot to take in, isn't it, the setting It is. It? I mean, especially, you know, it was only a month ago we were chatting to him on Sky Cricket back home. Myself and Rob Key were doing an interview with him. He was larger than life. He was his normal self. He was in his man cave, as he called it. And then walking down from the hotel just now, you just can't believe that the great man has left us, really. So it is surreal. Um, but Shane would have wanted it like this. If there's one place he would have wanted to be remembered, it is here. The hat trick here, the Strauss dismissal here, everything that he did here um, meant so much to him. Um, he, was a, he was an unbelievable cricketer and bloke. And Nasser, why does England hold Shane with such affection? There was 10 pages in the London Times the day he died, and, and it was pure you know, really affectionate prose. Like, there's this... He tormented England, and yet they love him. Well, he did. It obviously started with that gatting delivery all those years ago, and it was just that wow moment. And then he became a little bit like the pantomime villain. The fans, the Barmy Army, all the songs, they loved to hate him, but they also appreciated the way he reacted to that, the way he would react to a difficult situation. England fans, uh, uh, and the English in general, love someone that is not just a genius. They love someone that, when the chips are down, will fight seriously hard for their team, for their country. 2005 Ashes series, Shane Warne gets 40 wickets when Australia are losing the plot against England. He gets, what, 250 runs in that series. He treats people how he finds them. Um, that's why the, that's why the English, English fans love him. He's so much more than just the stats of 708 test match wickets. He is an entertainer centre stage or any venue, you know, bars will empty when Shane Warne comes out to bowl. Now, you've got to take us inside the opposing dressing room. You know, when you were playing him, Mike Gatting once said it, the intimidation starts with the eyes at the top <laughs> of his run. Like, tell us about facing him, you know, and, and, and you know, what happened in team game plans and how oh, was we, we gave up on team game plans. Again. <laughs> I think in the end, Peterson summed it up pretty well. Peterson said to himself, don't play the name, play the ball. And for a long time, we played the name. We played Shane Warne, we played the Gatting delivery, um, whereas Peterson came in in 2005 and had no mental baggage or scarring and just played the ball. Easier said than done. What was it like? It was the best thing you did in your life and the worst thing as well. You had this legend, this aura, 30 yards away from you, spinning this Duke's ball from one hand to the other, the blonde hair, the zinc, the flared trousers, the, the inevitable sledge when you got down his end, the drift in. However many times you said to yourself, he's going to drift it in, don't try and clip to leg. It would drift in, you would try and clip to leg. The flipper, we never knew what a flipper was in England. We were going to Google search to search flipper. And, you know, Stuart and Atherton in Brisbane that year were up on the gantry trying on the binoculars, trying to work out what this delivery was. He bamboozled us for years. But I'll tell you the thing about Shane. If you got runs against him, very rarely you got runs against him, he would be the first person at that gate or the dressing room door to hold a hand out and say, well played today, you were too good for us. What was a warning sledge? Like just a little clip, of heart, a clip when he was walking back to his mark? Oh, that, I'm not sure there's many I can repeat on here. He, he was more mental disintegration. He'd, he'd welcome you in the morning and then he'd go, morning Nasser, and then he'd say, you do realise I've got you out 13 times in, te in <laughs> Test Match Cricket, Nasser, and I'm going to do a story tonight in 99 where he sledged me out in the first final at the SCG. He just came on to bowl. I think it was AB's fault, actually. AB told him, if you're not in the game, pick a fight, and he picked a fight with me. He got me out, and he won Australia the game. So he had everything. He had the genius. He had that competitive spirit, but he also was a real fighter. Adelaide 2006. England get 550 with Flintoff as captain. Who's bowling England out on the last day? Shane Warne. He never knew when to give up, ever. But you uh, you occasionally took him on in the commentary box, which is really yeah. rare. No one does that. But I've heard you say, now, hang on, Shane. And their words not uttered around the globe very often. No, I think that's why he quite liked coming over to England. I think there was a core of some of the Sky Cricket commentators that really got on with him and didn't, in the end, actually, 
didn't want to know shame because he was shame worn. You know, he must surround himself by everyone, or did, or a lot of people that are oh, shame worn, it's shame worn. Shane was at his happiest when he was down with his mates or down in St Kilda or in the green room with Sky watching AFL and trying to explain to Rob Key the AFL rules and ordering his pizza and chips. Um, and we, or playing golf and sniffing in your backswing or something halfway through, <laughs> it, that was when he was at his happiest. And once you got into that shame worn clique, that shame worn he trusted you, you could. I remember once early on I said to him in Adelaide we were doing the game, and I, and I said something like, oh, you always said you'd be a great captain of Australia, Shane. And he just turned to me and went, you Muppet Usain. So I'd obviously hit a bit of a nerve, <laughs> but later on, you got to know him and you, you, you got respect in both. I mean, it's very easy in one direction with Shane. If you got his respect in the other direction, he would absolutely give you the time of day. He'd do anything for you, Shane. Some of the stories floating around since he's passed away, things that no one knew about, things that he's done for other people quietly behind the scenes. That is shame worn for you. You're representative of so many tonight, Nasser. It's great to have you here. Thanks for your generosity of time. No problems at all. Nasser Hussein with the view, uh, the visitor's view of Shane Warne.